Hello, how are you going? Welcome back to our second instalment of Why Not, uh, where we showcase our love of Australian wine and talk about wine, wine, and more wine. So why not? And I'm here with a lovely friend today, um, a wine connoisseur, I should say, V. Thank you for your introduction. So hello, my name is V. So I'm uh, Vice President of Saigon Sommelier Association. Very glad to sit with you today to talk about wine and more wine. And maybe drink some wine, I reckon. Oh yes, of course. Uh. Fantastic. <laughs> cool, well, today we're gonna to be discussing more about wine regions and what really makes Australia great in this. And as we know, Australia is a big country and yeah. it has many territory or terra yeah. in the sense of wine. I don't know, where, where do you wanna start on that? What, what, what wine? A so wine region. In Australia, we have 65 different wine regions. But uh, for today, we cannot, you know, talk for all about 65 regions because it's too much and we cannot taste everything, right? Yeah, I think if we tasted everything, we'd walk out here a bit <laughs> legless today. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. So, uh, like, Australia is a huge country, so it's separate into, you know, like Western Australia. Mm. So we've got Northern Territory. South Australia and then New South Wales, Victoria, and then also Tasmania is a very lovely island in the southern part. So I think we can move from you know the from the east to the west. So we can we cruise around Australia, yeah, like something this, like huh? that, and then yeah. we can fly into you know Tasmania. Uh. So I think we can start from New South Wales. So okay. the, f the first wine region ever in Australia is Hunter Valley. Fantastic. You didn't know that Hunter Valley. <laughs> yeah, mm. but actually Hunter Valley is a very lovely area and they are very focused into, you know, white wine. Ah. And it's like very full body and round white wine and mm. not it's not made from Sauvignon Blanc or anything like that, but it's made from Simeon. I heard they're very famous in the world. Yeah. One of the best, I would yeah, say. Yeah, one of, of the best. Sorry, so, not just being Australian, but I have to say, I have I know. to say. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's not like that, but uh, like when we talk about like Semillon and Semillon Blanc, we, people mm. would think about, you know, white wine from Bordeaux. Mm. But actually in Hunter Valley, they got a very nice and very unique uh, like flavor and then a unique uh, way that they made that. So now we move from New South Wales into a very lovely, uh, like smaller area is Victoria. Victoria is so New South Wales. Like New South Wales okay. in here, there's the very small one is Victoria. So I will I will mention about Mornington Peninsula, mm. like because I love Pinot Noir. Uh, it's not only from Burgundy, but I love Pinot Noir from everywhere in the world. Good. So I think when Mornington Peninsula is a good idea to start with, you know, something light and something very fresh and lovely, and you know, like it's very easy to 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 start with when we mention about you know red wine. Mm. Because it does don't have a lot of tannin, but then because Mornington Peninsula, they got a very lovely, you know, cool area. So I, it's cooled down the crepes, and then you got more acidity than you know tannin. Mm. So it's easier for you to approach. Is it close by the coast? Uh, what what makes yeah, it yeah, so it's unique? Quite, it's so quite, tell me why that's close to heart for yeah, you. Yeah, it's unique because it's very close to the ocean. So mm. the ocean breeze will cool down on the on the vineyard over there. You know, when when you drink a wine coming from Pen Pennington, uh, mm. Mornington Peninsula. And you think, oh, you feel the, the the sea, you feel the ocean, and you feel the corners coming mm. from that. What what other region from moving down? Are, are we moving to so, South yeah, Australia like or from where Victoria, are we going? From Victoria, we can go to uh, let's say South Australia. Very I well. think South Australia is the crazy spot for you know wine region for all the very famous producer because they got a lovely like the Cetiroir and climate, no. Mm. Yeah, we're very lucky of being down in the bottom of Australia yeah. as well. We've got heat, but we've got that sea coming through as yeah. well. I heard South Australia produce a lot of wine out of yes. all the wine regions yeah, coming exactly, out. Exactly, exactly. Uh, like uh, when we mentioned about South Australia, yeah, I can spot out like we got uh, for white, we mm. got Clare Valley, beautiful for white, you mm. know, with uh, very high acidity and because they're very famous for Riesling. Yep. So we can feel, you know, all of the freshness and something like petrol. And then uh, we got another spot like very really famous for white also like Eden, Eden mm. Valley coming from Barossa. So of course, when I mentioned Barossa is something very famous. So inside Barossa, we have two different sub region. Ah, uh, yeah, I like to hear this. <laughs> because when you usually when we just see, you know, oh, yeah, it's Barossa, but mm. it can come from like Eden Valley, a little bit higher in altitude or it can come from Barossa Valley. It's mm. a little bit lower, 
but you know like with the lovely uh, tiran and everything it's very good for the wine it's mm. not you know very steep or it's not too flat mm. so it's beautiful to let's say cultivate shiraz and also like cabernet sauvignon and, get, and in that sense more. that means being open like that it will get a lot more light coming through for yeah the sun, so you so can you that... can have you know like if it's in a vineyard like this you can have more sun mm. into your your crab bunch so it's easier for them to grow so people might think like oh wow shiraz is the birthplace of Shiraz can come from, but it's not. But it's not. But it's not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but it's too famous, you know. Mm. Everyone have very great Shiraz. And I think we're going to taste some Shiraz for today. Well, fantastic. I'm yeah. always down for tasting <laughs> as well. I'm up for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we can do the tasting now. All right, so Jay, as I say. So two magical glasses appear. <laughs> yeah, it's got a beautiful nose. Yeah. Um, very, I would say in a sense, it's very clean, um, mm -hmm. crisp. Mm -hmm. I get the citrus coming through as well. Yeah, like something green, no? Yeah, it's green. I'll say green, grassy. Like, yeah, I'll say grassy. grassy as well. White opens up as well. Yeah. You, I'm going to get a lot more mm -hmm. of that characteristic. And as we said on the other episode, we like to swell because we want to pull out the characteristics of the wine and it does help us through our nose. Yeah. And for the blind tasting, I think for the temperature is very important mm. because if we put it too cold, then all of the aroma and flavor will, you know, like hidden somewhere and then so it's with this temperature like 12 to 14 mm. this is a crate nice so you can feel the acidity is quite you know as you see it's no. a mouthful it goes around the mm. acidity really kicks in yeah. um this is something that would be fantastic i could say with uh, being an australian i love my seafood i like my white fish i like my oysters mm -hmm. i like all of that sort yeah. of sense but a great dish that would go well with spice. Mm -hmm. um, very well pairing on this as well. So you feel the roundness. It's not something, you know, too flat or too fresh that when you drink it and it's just go away. Mm. So you still have, you know, the aftertaste. It's still something, you know, like green and flowery and citrus in the back. But it's good as well. The alcohol content, um, it's quite smooth in the mm -hmm. sense where it's not going down where sometimes you can experience wines they give you a bit of a yeah, burn yeah, yeah. and things All like right. this yeah, is quite yeah. nice as well mm -hmm. by itself so for me it, it's a bit more of the citrus as i get through as well but i get minerality i get the green grassy yeah. notes coming through um as it opens up as well mm -hmm. it's a great wine it's, it looks young as well to me from the color you see it's quite you know with the color we can get is something young but mm. it's maybe not no nah, never know with the elegance yeah to me it's it's not a chardonnay in mm -hmm. a sense it uh, doesn't have that sort of characteristic mm -hmm. for me i think it's a single um it's not a blend um, i'm not sure if this is more down on the coastal mm -hmm. i'm not sure whereabouts on what coast uh it could be victoria or it could be new south wales i'm not really sure mm -hmm. but i do think it's a sad blanc it's Sauvignon Blanc, you're right. Ah, bang. Where, where is it from then? Where, <laughs> where are we looking? Like you said, it comes from the coastline. Yep. But you can move a little bit western. So I, I brought you a lovely wine from Lewin Estate. So it's a uh, Magret Okay. Oh, oh awesome. Yeah. If you want to show the Yeah, that so, as well. wow, well, like you said, it's coming from a coastline because you feel the freshness. Yeah, crisp. So Magret River I get as well. is just. It's a spot that's surrounded by ocean mm. and it's very close to India Ocean. You, you, you look at the color and you think it's uh, something young, but it's actually 2016. Mm. So it's like six yeah, years. Be, yeah, well, yeah. well done, it's got and some age to it. And it's because of the screw cap. Mm. So it keeps, you know, the wine more One fresh. One thing about I love Australian, yeah. we make it easy for everyone. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes with cork, um, there can be inconsistencies yeah. that lead to corkage. But mm -hmm. something in Australia with yeah. the new world sort of wine, mm -hmm. we're very on the screw cap. So I, I love screw cap actually because, it, you know, you can make sure that your wine will develop in a good way. Mm. And there's no, you know, like excess oxygen into your wine or anything, or the, you know, like uh, the TCA, the, the cork fueling. So like Margaret River for me is a, is a lovely place mm. because I think it's for, for whom, who want to, you know, stay on, on the seaside. And, you know, it's lovely for travel, mm. and to have some good wine with some good seafood, like you already mentioned. And Margaret River is famous for whites. What what else do they have around they're, they're there? Very, they're very famous for, you know, white. Yep. And also some red, but they are more in white wine than red wine. 
because they stay in the coastline, so they benefit a lot from the Indian Ocean. Mm. So it's very f good to crawl and you know to to meet some white because they got you know a uh, lovely morning breeze in the midday is not too hot, so it's just you know lovely for the for the crepon to crawl with more acidity, mm. you know, and and of of course with a little bit of sugar inside. So it's well balanced. That's a very unique point yeah. that we're, we're talking about today as well. Yeah. Each region is unique for its own characteristics yeah. and it really affects on how mm -hmm. the terra, yeah. um, coastal, inner land, mm -hmm. outer, things like that. Another thing that I love about Magret River because it's kind of the youngest wine region in the world. Oh wow, it's So I mentioned wine already region. about the oldest wine region is Hunter Valley, it's, you know, in New South Wales. And then we move into my uh, oh, like, we made a little detour uh, first yeah, yeah or you can you can fly like this so you move to the western australia so you met the youngest wine region in australia oh and fantastic in the world. as well oh, wow. yeah because they, they established since 1960 so mm. it's quite young you know like for hunter valley they 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 have wine and they you know producing wine since 19th century mm. and for Margaret river it's 20th century so oh, it's, but you know, that's it's fantastic. A, they, yeah, but got it's young, but it's, you know, because when you're young and you got a lot of energy. That's it. I was going <laughs> to say that. You could play around yeah, a lot then, more. Yeah, then they play with the terroir. They play with the, the way they met wine. Mm. And, you know, they are very open mind. They they learn from a lot of different people. For the Win Estate, they established from 1973, around that area. So uh, they, they put a lot of energy and then they create a lot of different you know, wine mm. and wine label. Like you can look at this is Axiri. So you got a lovely kind of picture mm. and they change every year. A little bit like, you know, Mouton Rocio. Good, that's <laughs> fantastic. But it's a good to see yeah. um, from the region. It's good to see a bit of an input there of the Sab Blanc as well. And you see the, the energy and the, you see the youngness in the wine, mm. the way you taste and, you know, they use a little bit of oak. But mm. not too yeah, oaky. I was going to say, uh, getting yeah, yeah. through a little bit of as it opens up now, a bit of warmth in there. I'm getting a bit more characteristic yeah. coming through as well. They they use oak in a very you know uh, small a part, not, not well. too much, you know, to just to enhance the flavor. And mm. then you know, like uh, you had roundness, a little bit oaky in the, in the aftertaste, not you know too much on on your nose. So. Where, where are we moving <laughs> on to now then? Well, now, because we move on around to Western, and we can move back to South Australia. But I will mention about Adelaide Hills. Oh, but wow. I think you, you, have, you have more experience in Adelaide than me. Well, being from Adelaide and growing up in Adelaide, it's been great seeing the regions, what's out there. Um, especially once um, establishing, learning about wine, I should say. In Australia, we're very lucky in the sense that we can go on wine tours. We get mm -hmm. on a bus and we drink responsibly, okay? <laughs> drink responsibly. That's um, important. <laughs> yeah, we generally get a big crowd of friends together and we like to go on wine tours. So we go out through, say, as you already said, like Barossa Valley, we get out to Eden, then we can shoot over to Clare. Mm -hmm. um, but then we can do a big dog leg and come back through some other smaller regions. But go to some... Um, while we're coming around, um, other places like Adelaide Hills, as you mentioned, we get mm -hmm. up Piccadilly, we start getting up there, but then you've got McLaren Vale, then you've got uh -huh. all this other sort of yeah, stuff yeah, as yeah. well, which is kind of unique, very unique, I should yeah. say. And we can mention about McLaren Vale, like you just mentioned, because oh. McLaren Vale for me is something very interesting. Again, they're very close to the coastline. Mm. So I think Australian people is very smart because when they say the coastline, yeah, I will choose the right variety that we can crawl over there. Yep. So what I love about Australian, because they are a young uh, country, we can say a new world wine country. It's not mm. like in own world, you know, you need to stick with all of the rules. But in Australia, people will choose what they want to crawl and what is good for the terra. It's very, very diverse. Yeah, and it's very diverse. E even with the terra, it's about playing around. Yeah. And I, I guess a lot of the winemakers um, have that freedom to experiment as well. And yeah. it, the good thing about Australian wine, where, as you mentioned, we're not restricted as yeah. such as well. So we can really expand the horizons. We can try things that work yeah. and, tr and some things won't exactly, work, but you know, exactly. trial and error. So they move from, you know, very classic, uh, like international crab variety into something really new. Like they have Fiano in mm. Latin Vale. It's come yeah, from I'm, Campania. Come yeah, from I've, South. Heard, I've heard about yeah. all these different grape varieties yeah. coming, which is very exciting as well. And so, yeah, the, with the terra and the mm -hmm. climate as well. 
um, different places a Mediterranean mm -hmm. sort of feeling and that it grows yeah, yeah. really well. Actually, when we, you know, learn more about wine region in Australia, you will see Shiraz from Barossa and mm -hmm. Shiraz from, let's say, even Tasmania, they got Shiraz. You will feel a different taste because they grow in a different kind of climate and terroir. So we mm. cannot just say, yeah, I know it's Shiraz. All Australian Shiraz is the same, but it's not like that. Well done. Even like you had Margaret River Shiraz, it's really mm. light. So it's totally different than the Shiraz coming from Barossa. Well, I hope we were going to try some Shiraz, as you said. I'm looking forward to if yeah. we've got anything. Yeah. So now we move from South Korea, so we can fly into the southern part. It's Tasmania. So it's a lovely, uh, you know, they cover by ocean, they cover by ocean, water. Ocean all the way yeah, around, Yeah, so we you have know. Tasman Sea, <laughs> Indian Ocean, and, you know, Bass Strait. Mm. So they cover by water. So they got, of course, maritime climate. Mm. So with a lot of, you know, like rainfall, a lot of humidity, but then they, they adapt that. So when people mention about Tasmania, people will mention about sparkling wine. Yeah, Tasmania is yeah. very well known for a sparkling wine as well. They are very well, well known for that. Mm. And I think from the first episode, you already know about Yeah, we talked to, we mentioned about Australia with Tasmania, how the sparkling is right up there in the world mm -hmm. as well. It's the Australia, even though we've got the classifications mm -hmm. and that, say, Champagne is France, but yeah. we all come into that. But this sparkling wine is right up there with that quality yeah. of Champagne. Yeah. So, yeah, so we can do a, another wine tasting. Two great that we're going to go through here. I can definitely look at both of these um, wine glasses and mm -hmm. I see the coloration already. I see yeah. one is a bit more bright, robust of mm -hmm. um, red mm -hmm. and one looks a little bit, it's red of course, but it, yeah. it sort of looks a bit dirty in a sense. Not dirty, yeah, but yeah, you know, I, the, I know color, the you coloration. Mean, yeah. Because it's not very clear, no? It's yeah, a correct. little bit, you know, like turbid inside. Mm. And it's more, this one is more in, uh, let's say, very deep ruby color, like what I... You know, as some year we always say like deep ruby or something mm. like that. So it's more. But I can in, definitely you know, like, see two different. And this one is more up. in purple. Yep. No, it's more in purple color. So I think it's very interesting. So if we we look at the color on only, we didn't taste or didn't smell it yet. So we can see is one can coming from a very hot area with you know more color on on the skin. They they have more sun into the vineyard. Another one can coming from you know a, a colder area. Okay, that, that's have, a very good point. Yeah, yeah wow. Well. So like less color, mm. less tannin, it means the wine can be more like lighter. So while well, we, we have okay. a smell, no? Yeah, fantastic. Oh. Yeah, completely different smells there. Yeah. So the first one is more, you know, like we can feel more like ripe fruit. Yes, I get a lot more coming through. I get raspberries, yeah. cherries. And very really ripe. Like it's not something, you know, more in the, in the acidity side. Mm. It's more ripe and more, more but dense. The, sm the smell is making it, it's t I'm salivating. It's, smell <laughs> it's juicy. I want to have a bit of a sip to that one. Yeah. In a second, huh? Mm. You can feel a little bit cream in the second class. This has got a distinctive characteristic that pops through for me. Mm -hmm. um, if we talk about uh, gum trees, eucalyptus and things like yeah, that, yeah, mint, exactly. a bit of mint as well. Yeah, exactly. I can get that coming through. So I think I know what this is without tasting yet. <laughs> it's absolutely different. Definitely rolls the mouth. Uh, the tannins goes, it pops through as well. With Australian reds, I like something that's a bit more bold up there. It has yeah, some spice. Yeah. It has a lot of juicy fruit mm -hmm. coming through mm -hmm. as well. The tannin holds within your mouth and coats your mouth. Yeah, but exactly. But it's the sort of wine that you can just... Yeah, yeah. When you're with some people, you're just yeah. having a bit of a cheers uh -huh, kicking back. Uh -huh. But for me, I, I, I do think I can nail that one straight away. I do think that's a beautiful variation of Australian Shiraz. Yeah. Um, it's very, it's very Shiraz feeling, no? It's got good from, aging, from, aging potential on this as well. Yeah, phenomenal. like from, from the color into your smell and into your palate. Mm. It's very Shiraz because you have, you know, very ripe, uh, like red berry and a lot of blueberry. So I'm right, Shiraz? Yeah. It's Shiraz. Oh, thank like, <laughs> You're okay, right. <laughs> okay, kick on that. But can you guess where it's coming from? I would say this would be a South Australian wine. Mm -hmm. I think this is more close to the coastal. 
Mm -hmm. um, a region that you haven't mentioned, which is a very good wine producer that is a bit of an island, mm -hmm. has a lot of water around, is called oh, okay. Kangaroo Island. I know that. Um, Kangaroo Island. Yeah, it's yeah. Kangaroo Island. So it's just off the coast as well. Um, very fantastic. I think Kangaroo Island, or I'd say Barossa, it's got that typical characteristic as well. That really kicks through. Oh, yeah, two of my regions, I'd think that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's a McLaren. I'd, I'd, for me, it'd be a bit more dry than that. Mm -hmm. This is very juicy mm -hmm. and such. Yeah. But for this one, the acidity and the tannin is quite balanced. Mm. And it's, it's more in the, uh, in the tannin side. Mm. So it can come in from something, you know, closer inland. Mm. Not very close to, to, to the coastline, no? So, yes, Barossa. I, I, don't, I, I'm, I don't know. Okay. You taste the second one and then okay. we show well, the we'll come back to that. So <laughs> I'm, right. I'm pretty, that's the Shiraz, so I'm pretty sure so on that. So Shiraz, Barossa. Got me thinking on that now. I hope it is. <laughs> Pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's totally different. It's opening up, huh? And you should mention as well what happens with wine. Um, certain wines need to open up and they need a bit of oxygen sometimes. Yeah, it needs oxygen. Because, mm. you know, like when we uh, when we made wine and then we bottle it, sometimes the wine is made to, to age. Mm. It means they need oxygen by time to <clears throat> develop all the flavor and develop all of the, you know, characteristic. So if we drink it a little bit too young, so we, we need, we, we do aerate, not decant, mm. but we do aerate. It means you put the wine into a decanter mm. and, you know, just let oxygen come slowly inside. So we're just opening it up and it's yeah. getting all that oxygen. So because really we, we cool. can't need to separate sediment for the own, mm. own wine, but for the young one, it's just aerate. Yeah, Australia, you need, you know, Australia is aerate. pretty good. A lot of young <laughs> wine that we come through, but yeah. we really have our high ends uh -huh. as well. But yeah, this is a great example here coming through. Something very tasty. Yeah. Uh, definitely and for, for that the color, you see me. a little bit orangey outside. Mm. It's not, you know, like very young one. It's a little bit orange outside. Oh, I see what you're saying with the coloration coming yeah, through so as you well. Yeah, so uh, you see the rim outside. You see it's a little bit orangey outside. Yep, that's and correct. And come to the core, you more, you know, like deep ruby deep, color. yes, as you were saying. Yeah. So I would say it's not a young wine. I mean, young, like one or two years. It can come from, you know, from five years. Mm. And that sound that you hear, it, we're being a bit fancy, you know. Yeah. We're rolling the wine around yeah. in our mouth and getting a bit of yeah. oxygen. What, what, yeah. What's it called? Uh, because I, I want to have more oxygen in there. Mm. And even when you swallow, you still can have all of the, the aroma in the bag. Mm. So if we just drink it straight, I cannot feel anything. You know, mm. when, when, you know, like me in Vietnam, we always do jump and jump. No. <laughs> Where are you? I'm, I'm sleeping yeah, on the side. <laughs> actually, when you drink that, it's very good. You know, mm. like, oh, yeah, you had a lot of wine, mm. but then you feel nothing. And mm. even now, I can still have only aroma and, and only it, flavor. This has a lot of characteristic. It's actually yeah. really coating the mouth. It's mm -hmm. really holding there. Yeah. Um, it does have age to it. I yeah. uh, definitely can taste it. Mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. see it with it holding. Mm -hmm. And and when, when we taste both like this, I, I love when we do like this because you see that the tannin in the first class is like we can say it's high tannin. But for the second one, we feel like the tannin is, is quite medium. Mm. And I would say it's velvety tannin because it's very, you know, it's just a touch of tannin like this. Mm. It's not light or it's not low. Mm. It's just a touch, very velvety tannin on, on your tongue. And you feel the aroma in the back. So if I do blind taste like this, I would say this one can come from some, you know, colder place mm. because of the tannin. Usually when people think about red wine, they would think like it's very tannic, but it's not always like that. You know, no, yeah, yeah no. it can, can have something like this, very, very velvety and balanced and it's, like, it's quite easy to, to, to drink, no? Definitely for me. I'm gonna, just going to throw it out there as well. I think it's a Cabernet. Oh yes, um, yeah. it's, it's a classic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a prime. Right. <laughs> it's a great example of a Cabernet Australian. Yeah, um, exactly. It's got some really good characteristics. Mm -hmm. with the, uh, the coloration as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly, mm. exactly. If anything, I'd say Tasmania. Yeah. Just to, just to throw it out there, I don't think I'm coming from all the way over here, yeah. West Australia as well. Because in Western, you need to have more like breezy feeling, no? A little mm. bit more salty. In, in, in your palate. That, mm. That's what I always have when I drink uh, Margaret River Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah, good point as well. Yeah. The minerality, the salt yeah. content as well. Yeah. You can really pull it through. No, I'll say um, Taz on that one as well. All right. I, I don't think it's South Australian. It doesn't fit into what okay. it is. So I will show the wine. 
Okay, fantastic. All right, so the first one, like you're right, is a Shiraz from Barossa Valley. Easy, yeah. Classic, classic yeah, down, one. Down. And it's come from Barossa Valley, it means a sub-region inside Barossa. Mm. So because when, when we just say Barossa, it can come in from Eden. Mm. But Eden is more for white and Barossa Valley is more for red. In a sense, why this is very close to my heart, Barossa, is because mm -hmm. it's just down the road. And in mm -hmm. Australia, the road can be very long. <laughs> um, I, yeah. My parents, we live close to Barossa, so say about right. half an hour away. Mm -hmm. So very close in that so, sense. So first one, you're correct, is a two hands Bella Garden. And it's 2018. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's, it's young. It's not too young, but it's kind of no, it's young. Good, it's when good. even it's like good. it's ready from, for drinking straight yeah. away. Uh, open her up from the bank. color. You see, it's quite young. There's no, you know, orangey or uh, more, cork, no cork as well, was it? Yeah. Okay. It's a. Uh, it's like that. It's a. Uh, it's a DM. Well, mm. it's a TM thirty. This means the wine can keep for a very very long time. Okay. So when they say because they use DM, it's a very nice company for cork, and mm. they said it's thirty. It means the wine can keep 30 years in a bottle without any problems. Oh, wow. Well, we well the, so, re the regions around Australia, that they are aging potentials. And yeah. that's what Australian wine is very well known for and growing yeah. on that as well. And I think for Barossa, because it's one of the very beautiful things about Barossa, mm. they got own vine. They're very proud for their own vine because through, you know, phylloxera and everything, they still keep on the vineyard away from that. And for the second one. Okay, cool. So you get it's a Cabernet Sauvignon from Tasmania. Oh, fantastic! Fantastic. Oh, okay. It's a Cabernet Sauvignon Tasmania because I already mentioned Tasmania is not only for sparkling wine. Mm. They can have a very good quality still wine. Oh, definitely and as well. And their Pinot is a phenomenal. Pinot, yes, oh. exactly. Pinot Noir, Chardonnay. Yep. Sauvignon Blanc, Blanc even, yeah. and of course Cabernet Sauvignon. Because as you mentioned, that region um, is very all coastal mm -hmm. and it's very, a lot of rain yeah. and it's like rainforest there as well and the yeah. humidity coming through. So mm -hmm. so uh, it's a torchbearer uh, wineries and I love this winery because it's made from a Vietnamese woman. I'm proud of that. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Who, who is the winemaker? It's uh, Miss... Nguyen Haiyan. She's a great woman. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Your wine's <laughs> phenomenal as well. Yeah, because I'm proud because it's not easy to find a winery or even a winemaker that's Vietnamese. Mm. Because wine for us is still, still something, you know, new. And it's not easy to learn onology and all the things like that. But Miss Haiyan, she's lovely. She used to work in, uh, in America. But she fell in love with wine, and she come to uh, she came to Tasmania looking for a spot, you know, mm. and then she she start with something very small, so it's a it's a very new winery, but she put her heart into everything. Yeah, you can taste it. So, you can so taste. you you see like the wine is perfect. The wine is like absolutely you you never think it's always oh, a Vietnamese winemaker and is she own the wineries and she mm. work with biodynamic philosophy, so we protect the nature and because the nature will help us to you know to to have the beautiful like vintage mm. and then you can have the beautiful bunches to make beautiful wines so in saying that with Tas talking about tasmania as a region is tasmania very famous for this now um, biodynamic organic mm -hmm. wines yeah and so this is something that's really growing within australia yeah, yeah, in that yeah, region yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, you told us some awesome facts about Australia and some awesome regions about yeah. even where the first Shiraz mm -hmm. come from. We all thought Barossa, but it's not Barossa, yeah. you know. You think, yeah. Where does it come from? <laughs> where was the first Shiraz? Like what I remember about the first Shiraz can coming from South Australia. Mm. Yeah. So Chambers Bar is the one who brought, you know, the first uh, cutting vine from Europe to uh, to Australia. So he's the, you know, the godfather and he's like... He brought the Syrah, then, then it turned into yeah, Shiraz, yeah. you know. He, he brought uh, Grenache, mm. he brought uh, like Chardonnay, uh, like Shiraz, Cabernet Sauvignon, and a lot of different uh, wine from Europe because mm. he, he knew that he can do something big in Australia. Oh, well, cheers to that. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you for today as well. A bit of in-depth learning about the regions and what really sticks out. Mm -hmm. We know that Australia has 
a lot to cover when it comes to wine, but going through some of those specifics that you went mm -hmm. through today is, it's a great learning experience, and especially for everyone today to be able to learn with Why Not, and this series as well will continue on. Um, in the next series, we will learn about uh, more in-depth of great varieties, yeah. so that sense. Keep watching, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. In the next episode, you'll be able to see a lot more about Australia, but we're going to go a little bit more in-depth and we're going to talk about great varieties. So we look forward to having you on the next episode and thank you. Why not?